it's uh, it's time again for our Wednesday evening Bible study. So I really do appreciate you tuning in, being a part of this, watching this. It's an opportunity for us to really feed our soul the Word of God and to study, find application. We're in the Sermon on the Mount and really trying to learn what it means to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. And so tonight we'll actually be in Matthew 7, and we'll look at verses 1 through 6 is what we'll be looking at, the concept of not judging or the concept of judging other people. And so that's what we'll be looking at. Before we jump into that, I do want to just encourage you. Right now, we as a church, we're in uh, this uh, journey of 21 days of prayer. Hopefully you received a prayer calendar um, this past Sunday. If you didn't receive one and would like one, you can reach out to the church office and we'll make sure that you get one of these. It's um, We also post it on Facebook every day what we're praying about. Very specific prayers. It's really divided in three different parts, for one for each week. And so week one, we're praying very specifically for the church. And so each day there is something for you to pray for. Week two, we pray for our community, Ponca City. And then week three, we're going to pray for our country. So church, community, and country. And that's really the, the challenge for us. And so today, we're Wednesday, we're on day four. I hope that you pray very specific prayers. Look at the prayer calendar. Not just that, on the back of that, there was uh, really a fasting guide, some information about what it means to fast, really to seek after God. And so hopefully you find this calendar beneficial. I hope that you take the challenge and journey through the 21 days of prayer with us. And um, I, I expect God to continue to do great things through our church. And really right now for our community and us as a country, we need the mighty hand of God to move. And that's what we're, we're pleading for. And so and I'll continue to take that challenge. Let me give you um, two requests and we'll pray for these requests at the end of our study tonight. Uh, I'd ask that you'd pray for Don and Sandy. Don, stage four cancer. To, um, today he started his treatments for chemo. Tomorrow on Thursday he will start radiation. And it'll be a, a long journey for him. We want to pray for the mercies of God that God would provide and that this chemo and radiation will will work with the cancer. And um, boy, they're just going through a, a lot right now. We want to pray for them. And then also I wanted to give you an update. Uh, many of you might recall Dan and Jennifer Mahuji. Uh, Dan and Jennifer uh, has they've moved away and, and haven't been to our church in probably a couple of years now. Um, but on M Monday, I got a phone call from Jennifer, and she was letting me know that Dan had passed away. And I knew Dan wasn't doing well. He was under hospice for a couple of weeks. And um, all that to say, I would ask that you would remember the family, that you'd remember Jennifer as she's grieving through this time. I know that they would greatly appreciate that. Well, tonight, tonight we're here in Matthew 7, and we're looking at uh, really these teaching that Christ steers us to about the concept of judging. Now, um, oftentimes we, uh, we can make judgments that aren't correct at all. Um, sometimes we're very quick to judge. Uh, we as a culture, we do not like people judging us at all. And so you have these sayings that people say, like, you can't judge me. No one gives you the right to speak into my life. And oftentimes people say, well, you do you. You just do whatever you need to do. And and so we, we really don't know how to handle this concept of judging other people. And oftentimes people will quote Jesus here in Matthew 7, 1, judge not lest you be judged. And and so we're, we're dealing this. What does Jesus really mean when he says these things? And how, as followers of Christ, do we live this out in a way that really honors him? Now, before I read the text, I want to give you two truths that you need to remember. First of all, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, we see that we are called to judge each other but not to judge those outside the church. Now, uh, that needs to have some clarity to that. What I mean by that is when we're talking about unbelievers, 
we should not expect unbelieving people to act like believers. That's what Paul says and that's what he means there. Why, why expect someone that has not had that inner change within them to act like an unbeliever? However, we can judge people by their fruits. And so if someone is calling themselves a follower of Christ, but yet living like the world, it causes us to step back and say, all right, let's look and see if there's really a life change. And so there's a, there's a balance at work here. Not only that, but the second thing that I want to remind you about is that we need to know the difference between that of a personal conviction and that of an absolute truth. Um, I think Christians can get themselves into trouble when they place their own personal convictions upon other believers. Now, a good study for that would be Romans 14, where Paul really flushes that out. It's in the context of food offered to idols, and he, he talks about that, of judging. You can, you can read that, like we shouldn't judge others based upon their own personal convictions. So there's a difference between my convictions versus what I'm commanded to live by. And so hopefully those make sense. Those probably could be flushed out a lot more. But I, I wanted to lay those out before we started to read. But now, if you would look with me here in Matthew chapter 7, I want to look in the first six verses, and it simply says this, Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite. First, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swines, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn and tear you in pieces. You now, Jesus gives uh, some guidance to this concept of what it means to judge and what it means not to judge. And, First of all, I would, I would say this, when we, when we study this, we understand that God is the ultimate judge, and that is a true statement. Um, we do not have the ability to uh, see the motives of the heart. We don't know necessarily what people are thinking. So at the end of the day, God is the ultimate judge, and I should not try to take God's place. That's, that's really important. God sees the heart. He sees the motive, and, and that's, that's important for us. Um, my relationship, what we find in this, is that my relationship to God is connected, ultimately, to my relationship with other people. And when we look at this, so let's, let's look at verse 1. Maybe this will make sense. It says, Judge not that you be not judged. And then in verse 2, 4, For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with what measure you use, it will be measured back to you. So how I judge other people, um, to the extent, it affects my relationship with God. And, and so there is ultimately a connection there. You can see about forgiveness. We really didn't flush that out. But in verses 14 and verse 15 of chapter 6, there's that connection between God and how I treat other people. Um, even in Matthew 25, where it says, when you do to the least of these, there's a connection between God and how I treat other people. And so you see that kind of flushed out here in verse 2. But then he goes on, and really Christ gives us the proper steps to us to judging other people. Now, this is in the context of, of, of believers, ju judging other believers. He's not necessarily saying that we shouldn't judge. He's just saying, here's how you do judge. Now, this is important. He goes on, and in verses 3 through 5, he gives us some insight of what this should look like. Verse 3, And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, and do not consider the plank in your own eye? 
Now, I, I love how Jesus uses this um, imagery to prove his point. And it's hyperbole uh, is how he uses it. He talks about a, a, a sawdust in your brother's eye. So if there's a, a piece of sawdust in your, your fellow believer's eye, he says, you don't have a right to point that out if you have this giant plank or like imagine a two by four sticking out of your eye. So obviously he's speaking in hyperbole, but he brings the point home. He says, you are judging people when you got all sorts of things that you need to deal with first. So he's putting the right perspective of how this lays out. So what needs to happen is a removal of the two by four before you ever point out someone else's sin, before you ever hold someone else accountable. So that concept of judging someone else you know, we are all sinners. We all need mercy. We all need grace. And I think sometimes Christianity can, um, I think people label Christianity as a bunch of judgmental people. And that's sad because if you think about it, really the gospel is all about grace. And so we have to be cautious on this. And so the extremes that we want to avoid is on one side is that all we do is judge. That's um, biblical, we shouldn't do that, especially when there's uh, some sin issue in our own life. And on the flip side, we just hold no one accountable and we just tell people they can live however they want. Because what we find is that church happens in community. There's in Matthew 18, you can clearly see that there's this uh, concept of, of church discipline that happens in the church that that leaders should make right judgment um, and so it's not that we're abandoning so stay away from the extremes on one side we're all we're doing is judging and on the other we don't do it at all and it, what jesus is saying is like here is the right way to pass judgment upon another brother okay so once again back in verse three and why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye but do not consider the plank in your own eye and then he comes into verse 4. He says, Or how can you say to your brother, Let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Now, as, as he's flushing this out, and as he's using this story, he says, Be very cautious. So there's this self-evaluation that should happen before I ever judge someone else. I need to make sure that I'm in a right relationship with God. Because if not, verse 5 tells us exactly what we are. And he tells us in verse 5, hypocrite. If you are condemning someone else while you have own, your own sin in your own life, he, we ultimately become a hypocrite. And so that there's a there's a real danger to this that Jesus is, is just calling us out on. He says, don't live in this place. And so when we um, are looking at this, there's a, ultimately the self-evaluation. Now, verse 4, he says, if you try to remove, that's a, that of accountability. If I, I go and try to remove this, this sin issue in my brother's uh, life, and you, you point it out, and you're trying to remove that small little thing, that sawdust, whatever that is, he says, how ridiculous is it if you have a two by four in your own eye, you first remove that before you can help someone else out. So, it's not that Jesus is saying that we should never judge. He's just saying we should do it in the right way. You know who we judge first? Ourselves. That's why in verse five he says, hypocrite, first, what we should do first, remove the plank from your own eye. And then he goes on, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So he is giving us guidance, direction of what this looks like. Before you ever pass judgment, there's this self-evaluation that takes place that we deal with our own sins and our own struggles. And we offer great grace with this. 
So it should be that of examining our motives. Um, so we should be cautious in how we condemn. Um, so when you're when you're calling out and when you're judging your brother, I, I want you to evaluate why. So th there's a real danger of when you're pointing out sin in other people's life, you know what it does? It makes you feel better about yourself. And you're trying to condemn other people and make yourself feel better. And that is sin and that is wrong. So before you ever step into this position, what Jesus is saying, first deal with your own sin. First remove the plank. And then you need to make sure your motives are very, very pure. This idea is it's not to condemn them. The ultimate goal is for that of correction. The reason I'm going to point out the sawdust in someone else's eye is to bring about correction. Galatians chapter five, uh, chapter 6, verse 1, it says this, Brethren, if a man overtake is overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness and gentleness. So in Galatians 6, he says, Look, we should try to restore each other. But how we do that matters. We're not condemning them. What we're doing is correcting them. The correction is to see them to come into a, a better relationship with Christ. And so what he's just steering us in to is this idea of accountability is important. Letting people speak into your life. But before you ever speak into your brother's life, your brother or sister in Christ, before you ever do that, you first have to deal with yourself. And I think that's just such a practical, um, profound teachings that Christ is giving us. There can be a lot of damage done in a lot of churches when you start calling out other people's sin while at the same time you are holding on to your sin so tightly. And at the end of the day, God is our judge. And He will judge the false motives, and he will judge us upon this. That's why in verse 2, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. We have to be cautious. So there's a level of caution here that we take. That we're with help and meekness, trying to bring healing and restoration into other people's lives. I would say this, it takes great discernment. It takes great um, a sense of following the leadership of the Holy Spirit of how to correct someone that is dealing with sin. So be cautious is maybe the warning I give to you. It doesn't mean that we should never judge. That's not what that means. So when Jesus says, judge not lest you be judged, doesn't mean you let people live however they want. But if you're a part of a church, you're part of the body of Christ. And we're called to hold each other accountable. And we're called to restore each other. So that's my hope. That's really tonight's teachings. I hope that you find some truth, some application from that. Next week, we'll look at verse 7 through 12. And it'll deal with this concept of prayer. And right now, that's the series that we're in, so I think it's only fitting. We're getting close to wrapping all this up, and so we'll, I'll let you know in a couple weeks of where we'll be, uh, where we'll be starting at and landing in Scripture for our next Bible study. Um, but what I want to do now is I, I want to pray for us as a church. Um, I, I want to pray that we take these words and apply them. Uh, and then also for those requests that I had mentioned earlier. And so if you would, bow your heads with me, and let's go to God in prayer. Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we ask that you are merciful to us. There are seasons and moments that we deal with sin in our own personal life. And I, I ask, I ask that you help us to self-evaluate before we ever hold anyone else accountable, that we look internally to our own life. 
God, I pray that as we take these words that you'd help us um, to remove that plank, but also help our brother to remove that speck in their eye. And I ask that uh, you would just help us to be true to your teachings and that we do apply them to our life. God, right now, be merciful to Don and Sandy as they are really dealing with the issue of treatments and of cancer. I, I just I ask that you would meet their needs. God, we pray for Jennifer Mahuji that you would that you give her comfort and peace during this time, that you would meet her needs, not just her, but the rest of the family as well as they grieve, that you would offer hope. And God, we just celebrate who you are and, and really what you do for us. Help us as your church to honor you and how we live, how we interact with each other, how we walk in unity. I, I just pray, I pray for that. And we ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Hey, thanks again for being a part of our Wednesday evening Bible study. God bless you.